Welcome to MSc videos. It's time to learn. So in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about clipping, line clipping. So already we discussed about what is meant to be viewing, what is by window, and then what is viewport, how to convert from window to viewport, and then we discussed about line clipping, how to perform those clipping. So in the last video lecture, we discussed about Cogan uh, Sadhana line clipping algorithm. By using that line clipping algorithm you can easily clip the line but there is a disadvantage so if a line if a line crossing the window for more than one occasion then you want to apply kogan sadhana line clipping algorithm for two times so that's the main disadvantage of kogan sadhana line clipping algorithm to overcome that disadvantage we are going for liang baski line clipping algorithm so in this algorithm we are going to use the parametric equation of a line so let us consider a line starting from x1 comma y1 to x2 comma y2 so we are going to consider a time range from 0 to 1 so at initial position x1 comma y1 the time is 0 it is a line is not yet started at x2 comma y2 that is it is a completion of a line at the end of the line the time is 1 so we are going to start from t t equal to 0 to t equal to 1 so we are going to consider two intervals t1 is 0 and t2 is 1 so at start of the line as we discussed the earlier x1 comma y1 t equal to 0 at the end of the line the time equal to 1 let us consider if a line is at any point of the time from 0 to 1 let us consider the time that the particular line is of the 3 by 4th of the time so we are having a line from x1 comma y1 to x2 comma y2 at this position t equal to 0 at this point t equal to 1 now we are having t equal to 3 by 4 now here we want to identify x comma y what is the value of x and what is the value of y that is identified by using this formula t equal to 3 by 4 the location is x equal to 1 by 4 into x1 so still we want to travel 1 by 4 from x1 plus we traveled 3 by 4th of x2 so 1 by 4 into x1 this part into 3 by 4 into x2 we are going to cross multiply 1 by 4 into x1 and 3 by 4 into x2 and similarly y equal to 1 by 4 into y1 y1 here and 3 by 4 into y2 so at any point t equal to 3 by 4 here we are considering t equal to 3 by 4 so x equal to 1 by 4 into x1 plus 3 by 4 into x2 y equal to 1 by 4 into y1 plus 3 by 4 into y2 if we consider t equal to 1 by 2 means then both the values are 1 by 2 so we will write a general equation for this so if the time is t if the time is t means x equal to 1 minus t into x1 plus t into x2 so we consider t equal to 3 by 4 means this portion is 1 by 4 into x1 here it is 3 by 4 into x2 so here we consider 1 minus t into x1 and here we consider t into x2 and similarly we will write it for y also so we rewrite this equation so we, we multiply here x equal to x1 minus x1 into t plus t into x2 then you take t uh, common outside x1 equal to x1 x equal to x1 plus t of x2 minus x1 you know what is that this is actually delta x the difference between consecutive x values we are saying as a delta x so x equal to x1 plus t delta x the location of x at time t in between from x1 comma y1 to x2 comma y2 and similarly you can identify the value of y y equal to y1 plus t delta y so now the parametric line equation is x equal to x1 plus t delta x y equal to y1 plus t delta y so this equation we are going to use now let us write an algorithm for this we know that to clip a point the x comma y must be present within the window coordinates the x must be present within the range from x double minimum to x double maximum and y is also present within the range from y double minimum to y double maximum so you will substitute this x and y value here so here we are here i am substituting x tends to x1 plus t delta x and y tends to y1 plus t delta y so now next step i am going to write this equation as a separate equation so here i am i am i am writing only this part 
So x w minimum less than or equal to x1 plus t delta x. I am, I am writing here in this way. x1 plus t delta x must be greater than or equal to x w minimum. And similarly, I am writing this equation is written in two different equation. And similarly, the y part equation y1 plus t delta y greater than or equal to y w minimum and y1 plus t delta y less than or equal to y w maximum. Then I am shifting the x and y values to the right hand side. So here I am having only t delta x. t delta x greater than or equal to x w minimum minus x1 and then t delta x less than or equal to x w maximum minus x1. So from this equation I am rewriting this. And similarly t delta y and then t delta y. And here uh, we are having different symbols are there. To make it all the things are a same symbol, we will multiply. So here this is actually a greater than symbol. To convert this symbol into a less than symbol, we are going to multiply negative by both the sides. Then automatically this symbol will convert it into a less than symbol. So here it becomes minus t delta x less than or equal to. Here I also I am multiplying with minus. So this term will become plus. So x1. This term will become minus. So it is x1 minus xw minimum. So we will keep the second equation as it is because already this equation is less than less than term. And similarly we will convert this third equation. Here you see t, uh, minus t delta y less than y1 minus yw minimum. And we will consider another one t delta y less than yw maximum minus y1. We are having these equations. So here I am having these equations. Now I am writing as a general term T P K less than or equal to Q K. Here I am going to consider uh, K value may be range from 1, 2, 3, 4 because here I am having four different equations. So T into one term here also here you see each and everything T into another one term less than or equal to your, your term is there. So K value ranges from 1, 2, 3, 4 each and every equation. So now what is P1? P1 here this is actually minus t delta x here we return t so p1 is minus delta x qk is actually here it is q1 x1 minus xw minimum and p2 it is actually it is a positive term so we will write it as delta x and q2 we will write this term xw maximum minus x1 and similarly p3 and then p4 so we are going to consider all these four values by using these values we are going to identify whether the line is inside the window or whether it is outside or whether it is partially inside or not. We are going to check that. So let us discuss the algorithm. So step number one, as usual we want to identify the line endpoints x1, y1 to x2, y2. The next step is we want to identify all the required terms delta x, delta y, p1, p2, p3, p4, q1, q2, q3 and q4. So we are going to assign t1 equal to 0 and t2 equal to 1 because at starting point the time is 0 at the ending point the time is 1. All the in intermediate points the timings are within the range from 0 to 1. If pk is equal to 0 then the line is parallel to window we can fix that. pk means actually pk must indicate in delta x or delta y. If delta x equal to 0 means the line must be parallel to any one of the window. It may be parallel to x axis or it may be parallel to y axis. If qk is less than 0, we can simply say that the line is outside the window. You can reject that. So these two conditions are important. If qk is less than 0 means we are going to consider the line is outside. We will uh, reject that line. For non-zero values of pk, then we are going to use that. If pk is less than 0, then we are going to identify t1. We are going to identify the new value of t1. So if both the cases are failed means the third case is actually a line is partially inside and the line is partially outside. So that we are going to consider a new value of time because partially inside partially outside means at least one portion of the line must be outside the window. So at that time we are going to identify a new value of that particular time at that time that line must crossing the window that value we are going to identify if pk is less than 0 then we are going to identify t1 it is identified by using t1 equal to maximum of 0 comma qk by pk so why we are identifying 0 comma qk com qk divided by pk which means that the line must be crossing more than 0 if it is 0 means that particular point must be inside the window so obviously if we are identifying a new t1 value means 
the line is not inside the window so we are going to identify new value of this particular t1 if pk is greater than 0 then we are going to identify t2 that is ending part of the line whether the ending part is inside the window or not so we, here we are going to identify minimum of 1 comma qk comma pk because the time value minimum value is 0 maximum value is 1 so here if you are identifying any value that value must be maximum 0 maximum maximum of 0 and if you are identifying any value here that value should be less than 1 so here I am using here I am going to identify maximum here I am going to identify a minimum so we are going to discuss an example at that time you will clearly understood this if t1 is greater than uh, t2 means then also the line is completely outside you can reject that line so or else you are going to identify a new set of x comma y by using further by using the new value of t1 comma t2 if t1 is changed we are going to identify only one x comma y value if t2 is changed we are going to identify only one x comma y value if both the values are changed then we are going to identify new set of x comma y values or else we are going to identify a new set of x comma y value for the only time which is changed so x equal to we are, we are, we know the parametric equation x equal to x1 plus t delta x and y equal to y1 plus t delta y you can't change this equation if t1 is changed then also you are going to use the same equation if t2 is changed then also you are going to use the same equation you have to substitute this x1 you have to substitute this y1 because from the starting point you are going to identify the time so don't change any values here you are going to substitute x1 comma y1 so let us discuss the same example which we discussed for a Kogan Sutherland line clipping algorithm so in this example we used that particular algorithm twice so here how we are going to identify this particular line clipping by using this Liang basket consider the window size 5 comma 9 clip the following line 4 comma 8 to 8 comma 8 so we will consider this so as usual we are going to start we are going to identify all the necessary values we know what is delta x x2 minus x1 so it is 4 delta y is actually it is minus 4 we want to identify p1 p2 p3 p4 and q1 q2 q3 q4 you remember what are the formulas of these uh, q values as well as p value if p equal to 0 means then we consider according to our algorithm the line is completely parallel to the window here if p values are not 0 and then depending upon the q value also we are going to identify this for the values p less than 0 we are going to use one set of formula p greater than 0 we are going to use another set of formula so initial value of t1 we consider it as 0 t2 equal to 1 so for p1 and p4 the values are less than 0 here you see p1 equal to minus 4 p4 is also minus 4 so we are going to identify new value of t1 maximum of 0 comma q1 by p1 comma q4 by p4 for those values which are less than 0 for p we are going to consider the q also p1 is less than so we are going to take q1 p4 is also less than 0 so we are going to take q4 so maximum of 0 comma q1 by p1 comma q4 by p4 so we are going to consider maximum of 1 by 4 comma 3 by 4 so as usual we are going to consider t1 equal to 3 by 4 so t1 value is changed which means that the line starting point is outside the window at 3 by 4th of time the line is actually crossing the window that's the meaning then we are going to identify for p2 and p3 the values are greater than 0 so we are going to identify t1 t2 actually here it is t2 minimum of 1 comma q2 comma p2 divided by q3 comma p3 so 1 comma 1, 1 comma 5 by 4 comma 7 by 4 so here obviously it should be 1 which means that t2 equal to 1 t2 value is not changed which indicating that the line ending point is inside the window the line starting point is outside the window so we calculated a new time value at that time the window is uh, the line is crossing the window but t2 is 1 which means that the line is the ending point is inside the window so now t1 is 3 by 4 t2 is 1 so t1 alone is changed so no need to calculate for t2 so x equal to x1 plus t2 t1 delta x so we are identifying 7 y equal to y1 plus t1 delta y here we are identifying the value as 9 so t1 alone is changed so here we are using t1 values i am identifying new x comma y value now the line is from 7 comma 9 to actually it is ending point it may be 8 comma 8 
so if t2 is changed means for any line if t2 is changed means here instead of t1 you here you are going to substitute it as t2 but you can't change this x1 x1 must be same x1 plus t2 delta x y1 plus t2 delta y but here it is not the case t2 is not changed now for the same line we used kogan sandalan algorithm twice but here you see within simple steps we completed uh, we completed this algorithm we found new values of x comma y which is crossing the window the new values of x comma y is 7 comma 9 ending point is inside the window so that t2 equal to 1 so the line is from 7 comma 9 to 8 comma 8 so this is the advantage of using liang baski algorithm instead of using a kogan sutherland line clipping algorithm so here we are having a clipped line from 7 comma 9 to 8 comma 8 thank you for watching keep on visiting my channel thank you